Once again, I am here with another combo video for you. My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, we're going to kick things off today with something from Camp Xbox, as there is a rather hefty interview with VG247 and Mike Yabara, who, of course, is from Xbox. And one of the things that they discussed was Xbox exclusive games. Now I want to go through what Mike Yabara had to say regarding their question, which I'll go through in a minute, and also a look as to what is actually coming this year that is a console exclusive to the Xbox One, and of course the Xbox One X. Now a lot of, pretty much all of, to be fair, what they're releasing this year is also coming out on PC, so that's why I stress the console exclusive. Now. VG247 rightfully pointed out that there's been a lot of talk recently around exclusive games, you know, since Time Out of Mind. This has been obviously one of the key ways that console manufacturers push their machine over their competitors. We have this cool game, they don't. And basically they were asked, well they asked rather, how he feels about the complaints, how do you feel about where they're at, and are they going to be addressing the concerns as we move into the cycle of the Xbox One X. So let's see what Mike had to say. He said, quote, I feel great about where we are today. When I think about today through the end of the year, we've got four console exclusives. And in my, my opinion, there wasn't one game right now from a momentum standpoint is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. You know, 8 million copies in four months. The only place you're going to play that on a console is Xbox this holiday. I love that. I think that the console world hasn't really seen how big that game is. I play it on I play a lot on PC and I'm addicted to it. I understand how big that game is. I just think that the console world is really going to wake up and as on Xbox by the end of the year. People will be like, this is crazy, it's addictive, it's fun. So there's that. If you want racing, you're playing on Xbox and we've got Forza 7 on Windows 2. I love that Windows racing win Windows racing games are coming back as well. Cuphead, just a really super unique game that targets a really broad audience, so we love that we're doing that. And then Lucky's Tale for an even broader audience. So I don't just think about AAA audiences, I think about the breadth of audiences we're attracting from PC to console, from kids to adults, and what we're doing. Those four titles as console exclusive, walking through December, feels really good for me. Take of Decay 2 and Crackdown 2 coming right after those in 2018. I feel good about the game roadmap and the value prop that we're beginning. That we're bringing rather. And he does indeed mention most of the games that are on the list that I have for upcoming Xbox One exclusives. I have a rather nice list here put together by Gimatsu and I will include a link to this in the description below and also as the pinned comment if you're at all interested and they even have some nice keys where you can see the full exclusives. They're obviously not that common and the more common is the console exclusive whereas of course the console it's releasing on is the Xbox One slash X, and of course it's also releasing on PC. And of course, you know, we've got, we've got Crackdown 3, we've got Forza, we've got Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, Super Lucky's Tale, but we also have a lot of smaller games, like again, Cuphead, and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Obviously some of this isn't this year, but still, it is there. And obviously the biggest thing is undoubtedly going to be Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. That is a huge get for Microsoft. And of course there has been a fair talk recently in the last couple of weeks about whether or not the game is eventually going to come to PS4 and that is actually going to be a timed exclusive for the Xbox One slash X. And there have been a couple of comments that kind of hint at the fact that it is going to come out on PS4 but to be honest I fully expect it to because I just don't see Blue Hole turning down the huge player base that they could get on PS4. This game is huge, and rightfully so, and I just don't see them agreeing to a full exclusivity deal, but again, if Microsoft waved enough cash in their face, possibly, but I do think this is going to be timed exclusive, um, just purely based off a couple of offhand comments from a couple of people over at Xbox. Nothing concrete, I'm afraid, but still, it is definitely a huge get, even if it is only a timed exclusive. And obviously there's even smaller games like Ashen, which we saw revealed at E3, which looks really, really interesting. And of course, games like Below, assuming it ever releases, which looks right up my alley as a big fan of Dark Souls. You know, the exclusives that uh, they seem to have, like, say, for example, The Last Night and all the other ones I just mentioned, are obviously going to be in the indie space. I have a, a lot of AAA console exclusives like Crackdown 3 and Forza and State of Decay 2 and, of course, Sea of Thieves. But the real meat of their exclusive list really is on the download-only titles, which obviously means the 
the smaller games, the indie games, obviously Player Unknowns is kind of the exception to that rule, but most of them are the games that are probably going to be bought for like, you know, 20 to $30, something along those lines. So of course you're going to be saying, well, what about Sony? And well, the list is definitely longer, whether or not these games are of any quality is another matter entirely, but the list is definitely longer. Again, there's going to, this is going off the list on Gimatsu, which I will again link below. But just to read off a few, obviously, you know, we've got big titles like God of War, and we've got Death Stranding, Detroit Become Human. Obviously, we've got Skyrim VR, which to be fair has not been reviewing all that well, but you know, that's a different matter entirely. The Final Fantasy VII Remake, The Last of Us Part Two. I mean, there's Knack 2 as well, but who cares, really? Uh, there's Nino Kuni 2, which again is coming out on PC, but still, obviously Spider-Man, Shenmue 3, you kind of get the idea where I'm going with this. Obviously, it's very much a uh, subjective thing as to which one is quote-unquote better, because honestly, it depends on what you want out of your games. But it's definitely an interesting question as to whether or not Microsoft are going to be able to step up their game when it comes to console or otherwise exclusives. Obviously, they have basically no real exclusives because all their games are coming out on PC as well but obviously Microsoft don't really care where you play the game as long as you're playing the game so that's not really a down point for them whereas Sony of course are very much limiting people's like you have to play this on on PS4 with a lot of these like Death Stranding it's only going to be on PS4 and Final Fantasy 7 potentially could be on PC and Xbox One we don't actually know at least I don't think we do but, you know, other things like Detroit is only going to be on PS4, that sort of thing. So, you know, my point is Sony is definitely winning in the quantity section. And I do think Microsoft need to kind of get their sort of A game on with the Xbox One X and get some real heavy hitters in there as well. But, of course, what really matters is the quality of the games and, of course having a good amount of those available for the launch of the console. Although, to be fair, most console launches have been pretty dire when it comes to the games available. I don't think I've ever seen a console release, really. That has had more than a few games that are actually decent, obviously. With Switch, we had you know Zelda, and obviously the PS4 launch wasn't brilliant. In terms of games, the Xbox One the games weren't brilliant at launch. So it would actually be kind of following tradition if the Xbox One X wasn't brilliant either, but hey-ho. I'm kind of dawdling a little bit on this point, but I do want to finish up with yet more news from Camp Intel, as we've had yet more benchmarks for the 7980XE, and this is, of course, the 18 core, we've got 4.5 gigahertz Cinebench scores. Now, yesterday I discussed a Fire Strike score which was posted, but now you can see the Cinebench scores and of course all the information about the user's build that they've provided as well. And a fairly nice score that it is as well. This plus Fire Strike gives you a bit more complete picture of what's to expect performance wise out of the 7980XE. And the answer is pretty damn impressive so far. So that's me done for this video, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.